Welcome back to Season 5 of Gothic Homemaking. Now, you may recall last Halloween season, towards the end of the season, I was able to find quite a few spooky kitchen towels, most of them from Joanne Fabrics. However, when I got back to the lair, I realized I have nowhere to hang them, and I thought to myself, I should make an ossuary towel rack. You know, being desiccated and deceased, you'd think you'd know something like that. In any case, an ossuary is a room or a place where human bones are kept, like the famous Sedlik ossuary in the Czech Republic, where countless bones are used to make beautiful decorative objects. So I thought to myself, hey, maybe I could find some human bones, like this one, to make an ossuary towel rack for the layer of Voltaire. Now, I know that many of you don't wish to decorate with human bones. In fact, some of you may be out there going, hey, Voltaire, that's not humorous. You'd be right, this is a femur. But I think I can use this to get a leg up on hanging my kitchen towels. Don't listen to him. But in all seriousness, I of course will provide you with a vegan option as I always do for those of you who do not wish to decorate using real human bones. For the time being, I'm gonna put Orville Dedenbacher in charge as I will be away from the lair, hunting for human remains. Let's get out of here. Salem, Massachusetts, around Halloween is a place even children flock in search of witches, or either hideous devil-worshipping ghouls who give children poison apples, or the innocent victims of a terrible American atrocity, depending on which history you believe. Personally, I subscribe to the latter. While there's plenty in Salem around Halloween to sink your teeth into, some would say the crowds will leave you feeling claustrophobic and strangled. I braved the crowd specifically to come to the Witch City Thrift and Consignment Shop where they were hosting the Freaks, Antiques, and Uniques Market. Just inside these doors, countless vendors were selling all manner of macabre merchandise. From witchy wares to spooky spine-tingling home decor. A boy who seemed lost suggested I head downstairs, where creative Cinderella was showing off her self-captured spiderweb designs. And my friends, Bats and the Belfry Crafts, were selling art prints and adorably spooky plush toys. But this horned fellow is the guy I came to see. His name is Jim, and his company is called Wicked Creations by Jim. Excitement was afoot at his table, where he was selling human bones of every kind, including these handsome skulls. But under the table was the real treasure trove. These were exactly what I was looking for for my project, and his prices were very reasonable. Jim is very knowledgeable and friendly, and helped me find exactly what I was looking for, including this bone, which I think came from a hipster. In time, I had some of the bones I needed to start my ossuary towel rack. My next stop was Memento Mori in Los Angeles, California. This place is truly packed with all manner of art pieces and macabre curiosities at a reasonable price. There are gods of many stripes and plenty of candles to light to them. Naturally, there are bones and apparently human bones were on the menu. Owner Bradley Hartman was kind enough to show me this enormous femur priced at $140. A good price for such a large piece. I also picked up this tibia, which was also quite large, along with a matching fibula for good measure. And that's no lie. My collection was growing. My next stop was Paxton Gate in San Francisco, California. This place seems less like an oddities shop and more like a natural history museum store. They did have human bones, but at $350 for a femur, these bones were out of my grasp. But I continued monkeying around in the shop until I found these reasonably priced attacking turkey legs. I suspect I can use these to sink my talons into another project later on. Next it was further north to Portland, Oregon to another Paxton Gate location. If the San Francisco location seems like a museum gift shop, this place seems like the whole museum. You can see a full review in my upcoming Weird Portland episode. Here too they had human bones, but once again they were out of my budget. The specimens were fantastic, but the prices were no laughing matter. 
Finally, I ventured to Orlando, Florida to the Prometheus Esoterica shop. This place was a little hard to find as it's in the back of the very pleasant and very pastel Abbey Rose Vintage Shop. But venture if you dare into the back of the store and you'll find plenty of oddities and curiosities. You'll find jewelry by local artisans befitting macabre monarchs and undead royalty. There are things to help you stay clean like spooky soaps and beard oil and vanishing kits. There are devilish duds for fabulous fiends and, of course, plenty of skeletons. Adam, the owner, was kind enough to tell me about them. Who's this pretty lady? This is Amelia. She's a 1916 medical skeleton. She was uh, put together in Chicago. She's got all the original brass hardware. She's uh, definitely my favorite thing in the store. I actually just got this of her. Wow. By one of, a local artist named Rick Kamala, over 36 black tattoos. So you'd probably hate to sell her. Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but everything's for sale. <laughs> and how much is she? I'm um, asking 4000 4000 Yeah. Every man has his price. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. I was just here to buy parts, and to that end, Adam showed me his bone collection. So what is this that you have here? This is a human femur. You see it's got numbers where they've labeled all the different processes of the bone. It's a very small specimen, but all the growth plates are fused, which tells you that it's not from a child. And is it legal to own? Legal to own, possess, sell. Uh, there are state-by-state -state laws whether they can come in or out of the state. As long as you're not in Louisiana, you're good. What's wrong with Louisiana? Louisiana has grave robbing problems. What? Louisiana has grave robbing problems? I need to make it to Louisiana more often. Find a girlfriend for Orville Dedenbacher. <laughs> they have a ban on the possession of human remains. And how much is that? I would say $95. I will take it. <laughs> Wrap it up. Absolutely. And now I had all of the bones I needed for my ossuary towel rack. Now, if you can't make it out to the places that I've featured in this episode, don't despair. You can likely find all of the human bones you need at theboneroom.com. Newer prices on the website show a femur will run you between $100 and $300, and a humerus is still between $100 and $150. And don't worry, my vegan friends, as usual, I have you covered. As always, I've provided a vegan option. If you do not want to decorate with real bones, simply go to hauntedprops.com, where I picked up a couple of humorous bones for about $23 and a pair of femurs for just under $29. Great prices. And the items look fantastic. Here's my collection of real human bones. And here are the artificial ones. And kudos to hauntedprops.com because these fake bones look extremely realistic. But now that I had my bones, I needed the hardware. And when I thought about what I needed in order to hang this on a wall, the first thing that came to mind was shelf brackets. So I took a walk down to Home Depot to see what I could find. I marched directly to the shelving section where I found these brackets. This one seemed a little modern for my taste. Now these on the right were a little bit more suited to the look of the lair. Passing the coat hook section, I found these which I thought could work. So I picked up a few. I guess you could say I was hooked. Next I went to the gardening section as it occurred to me that plant hangers could work. But not even as a lark would I put this thing in the lair. It's definitely not sinister enough. Now this one was more like it. It's ornate and already a glossy black, and I think these holes will come in handy for hanging bones. Next, I stopped by Bed Bath & Beyond to see if something in the curtain hanging section could work. I didn't want to use actual curtain rods, but these holdbacks were intriguing, and they came with finials in some very enticing designs, so I picked up a few. Then it was off to my local hardware store where I found this more elaborate coat hook. I loved the shape, though it wasn't my color of choice. But, upon arriving home I painted anything not black with Krylon black lacquer spray paint. And here is all of the hardware for my project. While the holes in these are very convenient for bone hanging, I ultimately decided that they were just too plain for the lair. So let's just put these aside for now. 
Now what I like about these is that they're a little bit more Victorian looking and more fitting with the style of the lair. But moreover, they can be mounted this way, and then it's a shorter distance from the wall, and we can do that to create two levels of bones to accommodate two different towels. Let's try that out. This is a sheetrock wall, so first I had to mark my holes, drill the holes, and put in a sheetrock anchor before I could screw in my bracket. Once my first bracket was in place, I had to figure out where the bone was going to sit in order to decide where to put the other bracket. I'm using the fake bones for this one because there's no loop for them to fit into. They have to be drilled into this hole. And I don't want to screw into a real human bone. I'd much rather use these plastic ones for that. With my second bracket in place, I was ready to place the first bone. I went ahead and marked the hole, and then I pre-drilled a small hole into the bone, just smaller than the screw. And then I screwed my bone into place. And now my first towel rack is done, though I'll have to do something later about those exposed screws. I then pulled out two more of the same bracket, and if I were to attach it to the wall here, the bone will come out to the same level. We'd have one bone right under the other. However, if I flip it, it sticks further out and we'll have two levels of bones and hence two levels of towels. Let's mark this, drill a hole, and get started. With one bracket in, I let it and the bone hang while I prepare the next spot. There are those sheetrock anchors I told you about. They help tremendously to keep your bracket secured to the wall. And with the second bracket in place, I was able to place the bone, drill a hole in it, and screw it into the bracket. And voila! Now I have a second bone in place. Next, we're using the plant hangers I found at Home Depot. And as you can see, we're dealing with a much more ornate design, vastly more beautiful. And the other thing is that I'm not going to have to screw the bones in because there are holes here, and the bones may very well fit in those holes. Let's see if that works. I placed my plant hanger on the wall, marked the holes, drilled the holes for the anchors, and put those in, and screwed the hanger to the wall. I threaded my tibia in through the hole, and with that in place, secured the other plant hanger to the wall. And now this bone is held in by tension. And what we can do now is use this upper curl to add a fibula, and hence, another level. I'm really loving the look of this one. Okay, this is the kind of stuff I get a little too excited about. These are the hold bags. These are not at all meant to be used for the purpose that we're using them. And that's what excites me, because I love to find new uses for things. Just grab the hold back, remove the cap, find a finial you like, and attach it. And now you have something really pretty to hang a bone from. Place your hold back sans finial on the wall, and well, you know the drill by now, literally. Now that's probably the easiest thing I've done all day. Slide your bone in place to mark the placement for your other hold back. Once it's attached, slide the bone back in and put your finials back on. I didn't particularly like the look of the exposed screw, so I decided to cover mine with an Oh My Goth magnet from my refrigerator. And there's the holdback version of my towel rack. If you want to keep the bone from sliding around, I'd recommend tying it in place with some lovely gothic ribbon. I'd say things are really taking shape. These are the very ornate coat hooks I bought at my local hardware store. What can we do with these? I ultimately decided to add them to the first towel rack up at the top to create not just one, but a third and fourth tier. Though these might end up just being simply decorative, I think they look fantastic. Here we have another set of the holdbacks with a really beautiful finial that looks very regal. I think it's just perfect for the lair. Those got added down at the bottom of my first towel rack to create a fifth tier. I finished it off with a human femur and some of my unicorn magnets to cover the screws. Next up we have simple coat hooks, which I think will be a very easy way to attach our bones to the wall. Let's give it a shot. 
holes were drilled, a coat hook was installed, and then you just need to rough in the bone to make sure you know where to place the second coat hook. And once you screw everything in, you've got yourself another towel hanging option. I'd call my ossuary towel rack nearly done at this point, but there was just one more thing. While at Home Depot, I spotted this, a towel ring. I've never owned one before, but I did have something similar. This is an item I picked up at Home Goods during one of my Halloween haul raids. It's in a bit of disrepair, but I taped off the bony bits, took it outside, and painted the plaque with Krylon Black Lacquer spray paint. I reattached the broken finger, and now I've added a towel ring to my ossuary towel rack. The only thing left to do was add a spooky towel from Spirit Halloween. I followed suit by adding my Joanne fabric towels to the rest of the bones and watched as the whole thing really sprung to life. Honestly, I don't think I've ever had so much fun putting up kitchen towels. And here's my finished ossuary towel rack. Now, some of you might be thinking, but Voltaire, you've got all those extra bones left over. Well, to you I say, grab some S-hooks and you've got yourself a gothic mug rack. Shut your dusty hole! In any case, that's probably more towel racks than anybody needs, but hopefully I've shown you a variety of styles that you can use, whether you're using real bones or artificial ones. Stay tuned for many more spooky kitchen and bathroom DIYs right here on Season 5 of Gothic Homemaking. <laughs>